Welcome to the uh, bonus video for the first chapter of this three bark tutorial. Uh, if you watch the part one, you might remember me mentioning and showing you how I use the custom filter for Substance Alchemist. Now, let me show you how to actually make a custom filter. It's rather easy. Uh, if you have any previous experience using Substance Designer, this is going to be a walk in the park. So let's start. I'm here in Substance Designer and I'm going to start with a new graph, Control N. The trick here is that when you're presented with this pop-up, you scroll all the way down. There you have a graph template called Alchemist Filter. Click OK, and what you'll get in the graph is just a bunch of input and corresponding output nodes that you can actually see here. So these input and output nodes are basically all the possible channels that you might have in Substance Alchemist. All you need to basically do is create a custom filter is to put whatever you need anywhere in between uh, the input and output and then export it. Everything else is already set up for you. As you might remember, we were using a filter that was basically doing slope blur only on the height channel. So let's recreate that. What we need to do, we need to find the height channel. Here it is. This is the input node and this is the output node. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create a slope blur, a uh, slope blur grayscale. Uh, because my height channel is the grayscale data. Uh, I'm going to plug it in, and I'm actually making a very simple slope blur uh, filter, uh, where I know that my both grayscale input and slope input should be the same. So we're going to connect them both and connect this to the output itself. Now I would also like to set up this node, uh, set some parameters and expose others so I can tweak them in Alchemist. For example, I know that I'm going to use it always in the min mode, Currently, it's not that easy to expose the drop-down menus from Designer to Alchemist, so that's why I decided to keep it at min. I also want my samples always to be at the highest level, but I want to tweak the intensity inside of the Alchemist. So, what we want to do is to expose these parameters. Let's come down to this menu over here and click Expose as a new graph input. It will already give you a name and everything, so just click OK. You can maybe play with the default minimum and maximum values if you want. Let's say the default is 1 and the max is, for example, 3. You can always type in your data afterwards. Click OK. What actually happened, as you can see, uh, I cannot control the intensity anymore here. It has turned blue. If I double click anywhere on the empty space of the graph, I will be able to see my graph settings. And if we scroll down under parameters, you will see that I have one parameter which is called intensity. And that's the one which is connected to the slow blur grayscale. Uh, I will leave all the other channels uh, as they are uh, and save this, uh, this graph uh, and just name it uh, height slow blur. I'm going to save and publish the SBSR file as well. You do that by right clicking and clicking publish uh, to the same location as uh, before and click save. Keep settings on default, everything should work just fine, so click OK. Now, let's switch over to the Alchemist to show you how this works. Let me just grab some kind of material, any kind, for example, this cracked dirt, to showcase what this basically does. If we go to the Material Height channel and zoom in to see what it does, we can add the custom filter by coming here to the layer stack in the scene. There's an option called Input a Custom Filter. If you click on it, it will ask you for the SBSR file that we just created. I'm going to navigate to that folder and select it. Slight problem is that the naming is a bit wrong. That's because I forgot to rename the graph in the designer. Let me just go back there so I can be a little bit tidier. Let's rename the graph to hide slow blur and publish the SBSR as previous. Back in Alchemist, delete the old layer and input the new one. And we have a correct name. The intensity parameter that we have exposed in Designer is right here and I can tweak it as I want. If you prefer to import the filter to be always in your library, you should come here to your filters and just click here to import the filter, making it constantly present. So to recap, we loaded a specific template, which you already get with Designer, and then you can insert whatever you need between the input and the output nodes of the channels making the filter with exposed controls inside Substance Alchemist. That's it. In the next chapter, we'll move on onto making textures from photogrammetry data. And in the first video, we'll go through the process of baking the building blocks in Substance Designers. See you there.